they're happy. They're psyched, man. Look at that. You see it. T-minus just about five minutes. We're going to carry this launch live when it happens. This will be SpaceX's seventh Starship test flight. What we're watching for here, a repeat of an unprecedented move, bringing this giant booster back from space and, like, catching it at the launch pad. That is not easy to do. They did it once already. You're watching that here. This was back in October. That was the first time that something like this had ever happened. You see it? It's kind of like a, you know... High-tech basketball through a hoop, if we can use that analogy here. Very dramatic here, but a big milestone in the space race, so to speak. And, of course, toward the future of space travel and Elon Musk's ambitions in that field as well. Want to show you another live look as we bring in Dr. Emily Rice, who's joining us here on set, a professor of astrophysics at the Macaulay Honors College at the City University of New York. Leroy Chow is joining us as well, former NASA astronaut and International Space Station commander. Tom Costello is with us here, our chief aviation correspondent, and Marissa Parra as well, our NBC News correspondent. Thank you all for being here. Let's just, like, lean in. Let's settle in. Let's get ready to watch this thing. What are we watching for, Tom? Well, this is, this is a very big and important task for SpaceX. Here's why. As you mentioned, this is the biggest rocket ever built. The people in that, in that area say it's like a massive earthquake whenever it lifts off. The point here is to test this technology because they eventually want to use this rocket to go into orbit. They want to use various versions of this rocket to refuel in orbit. And they want to take this rocket, this technology, to the moon one day, maybe even Mars. Variations of this rocket. Let me just tell you a couple of factoids here. This is 440, make that 400 feet tall, taking off, as you know, from Boca Chica, Texas. It is in two stages. There you go, the super heavy booster on the bottom. And then you got the Starship spacecraft itself. Uh, the heavy booster is burning liquid methane and liquid oxygen, and it is a monster of a rocket, as we've said. Uh, the plan here is to lift off and hopefully deploy 10 dummy Starlink satellites. There is the map, and there is the timeline. So about a minute into liftoff, they're going to go into what's called Max-Q. That's the moment of peak mechanical stress on the rocket itself. And then at 2 minutes and 32 seconds, you will have the super heavy, that booster rocket cut off. The power will cut off. And then at 3 minutes and 31 seconds, they'll jettison the booster rocket. And then it gets very cool because the burn <laughs> starts, right, for when they come back down on the booster rocket. And this is what SpaceX has trademarked yeah. and put a patent on, the idea that you can reuse the booster rocket landing back on Earth with the chopstick capture, which is an amazing piece of technology. Nobody else does that. Uh, and then we go back into space because we still have Starship that's up there. At 17 minutes and 33 seconds, they're going to deploy those dummy Starlink satellites. They want to see, can they do this? Can they deploy the satellites off of Starship? And then they will start bringing Starship back into, back into the uh, Earth's atmosphere. It will finally come in at about a minute, make that an hour and six minutes in. But it's not going to land. It will literally fall into the Indian Ocean. So this is proving the technology that is rewriting the entire game here. So, this technology, yeah. SpaceX and NASA wants to use to eventually carry humans to the moon and beyond. The Starlink component is really interesting here, too, Dr. Rice, because this is not something that SpaceX has done before. They're trying this for the first time. Yeah, this is, a, you know, we know that there's Starlink satellites up there now. This is the next generation of Starlink satellites. And this is the first time that the payload um, is being put into orbit by the Starship from SpaceX. Um, these ones, are, like I said, are, are not going into orbit. Like Tom said, these are... Um, kind of prototype satellites, but it's the first time that the payload is coming from the Starship. We are under one minute now to the launch of this ship. Uh, Leroy Chat, let me bring you in briefly here. In about 10 seconds or less, the biggest thing you're watching for. Go. Well, I'm watching for a successful launch, of course, successful separation, capture of the booster and Starship, deploy of those dummy uh, Starlink satellites, and a successful reentry, testing the revamped heat shield of the vehicle. So... Leroy, I'm going to come back to you as soon as this thing launches, but let's listen in now. Under 30 seconds for the launch of the Starship here. Let's listen. And they just said they are go for launch. Can I just tell you? 33 and 20 seconds. Two minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. We have the stuff. The vehicle's pitching down range.
We're more than 30 seconds into flight. Telemetry showing 33 out of 33 engines as it's pitching down range. Booster ship, Captain. avionics power, and telemetry Captain nominal. Rice, one of those engines was actually is actually being reused. It was recovered the from the super heavy booster that was flown during Starship's fifth test flight back in yeah. October. This, this might be one of the first times. I can't remember if this yeah. is the first time that one of those engines is being reused, but this is a huge advancement for space flight, being able to reuse these boosters. Yeah, it cuts the cost by something like a factor of 10. And so it makes these launches, you know, we're talking about the biggest, heaviest, tallest rocket, um, but being able to cut costs by that much can make this much more of an everyday occurrence, which is really exciting. Max Q right now, the maximum stress on this rocket as it moves and it is now supersonic, as you heard. Reminder that all of our teams down here on the ground are now looking at systems on the tower. They just did a manual check through. That's gonna inform that manual flight director's decision. Yeah, we're gonna be watching the next, next important coming point. Up, though, is gonna be hot staging. Yeah, I was just going to say, two minutes and 32 off, seconds. One heck of a light show. We'll have cut off from the super, what a super booster. Ascent. One heck of a light show, uh, Leroy, that is for sure. That's an understatement, ignite. huh? That's going to happen. Oh, absolutely. It looked attached. flawless. Uh, they haven't heard of any problems. Trajectory looked good. All 33 engines of the first stage burning. So next big event is hot staging, which should occur in about uh, uh, just a couple of minutes or maybe a minute and a half. And explain the hot staging, why that's so critical. Well, the bottom yeah, line so is, it is, is they go ahead, actually I'm sorry. light the second stage engines before the first stage engines completely shut down. And that allows the vehicle, the ship, to get away from the booster because the booster is still burning. But once it separates, suddenly it's got a lot less mass and it could accelerate and hit the ship. But the ship's going to have its own engines going, so it'll be accelerating away. So we should have no contact between the two parts. There you go. And you've just now seen the booster separate yeah. out. And a perfect, perfect jettison of the booster. And now it will begin its descent mm -hmm. back down to Earth. And again, that trademarked SpaceX move to land that booster back on, on ground to reuse it again. But more importantly, that incredible a job of grabbing it by the so-called chopsticks uh, back at Boca Chica, Texas. So that will be a critical, a critical point again. Marissa Parr, let me bring you into the conversation here because start, uh, SpaceX has done that once successfully. Loyal viewers of this show will know that the last time SpaceX tried this kind of thing, they were not able to do that. Um, explain how this particular launch compares because SpaceX, as Dr. Rice has, has pointed out, as Tom has pointed out, is really continuing to try to push the boundaries here of what space travel can be and how you can do it in a way that is in some ways more efficient. Right. And as Tom kind of outlined a little bit, uh, we talked about the ways that this is going to be a little different. Those 10 dummy mock satellites, if you will, uh, with Starlink. And I will point out, by the way, there is a working Starlink um, that will provide us some of the most compelling images that we have seen that we saw in these previous test flights. And we're going to catch a glimpse of that in that live stream that you're seeing right there on your screen. Um, but in addition to that, we're hoping to see a repeat of that successful heavy booster catch with those chopstick arms. And all of this factors into the reusability, right? Um, these are not just, uh, when we talk about the New Glenn uh, rocket, we're talking about um, Blue Origin, New Glenn, and Starship with SpaceX. Yeah. These are the largest, most powerful rockets ever built. And the reusability factor is key here as well, because when we talk about these larger missions, not just to the moon, but eventually one day bringing humans to Mars, that needs to be efficient, not just uh, when it comes to the engineering, but of course, fiscally as well, Hallie. And uh, it's not lost on any of us, the timeliness of all of this. It was just this morning, just after two in the morning, we saw another massive first in the space That's world, right. Blue Origin, successfully launching New Glenn into orbit for the very first time. Uh, now, finally, in the race, we're talking about a competitor to SpaceX, but something that was welcomed by the competitor. We saw Elon Musk, Jared Isaacman throwing in their congratulations. Jared Isaacman, of course, uh, the presumed incoming NASA chief. So um, a lot Lot to watch out for, but today a lot of timeliness because not just the first orbital launch for New Glenn, but then we saw the SpaceX, uh, we saw the, the International Space Station spacewalk. Sonny Williams, who was the test pilot for Boeing Starliner. So mm -hmm. a lot coinciding with each other on a day that we probably couldn't have even fathomed 10 or 15 years ago, Hallie.
Dr. Rice, it is a new frontier here in space exploration when you have these big private corporations led yeah. by people like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, trying to push the envelope. Yeah. Um, you know, it's always been there. Like, NASA has always relied on industry. There's always been contractors. I think what's new now is that the public knows about them as well. Mm. There, there's a much more of a kind of a fan base, for lack of a better term, um, for NASA, for SpaceX, for Boeing, um, than there ever has been in the past. It's really a new generation of space exploration, and it's the... <clears throat> I, I'm definitely of the mind that the rising tide raises all boats. Like, mm. everybody's going to benefit. This is... Um, you know, there's something that, of course, we have fiscal considerations, commercial considerations, but it's all humans that are doing this. Human, humanity together is going to get back to the moon and maybe even to Mars with these rockets. We are trying, Take a look yeah. here. It's coming down it right goes. now. Look at that super heavy booster right now coming back down to Earth. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, the engineering prowess on this is just astonishing. And it's right now coming into the chopsticks is... That amazing or what? Booster now hovering as it aligns with the tower for catch. Booster coming in. Down Get ready to, for that boom, Kate. Down to three engines. Wow. We did it. Yeah, listen, this is why SpaceX has completely rewritten the rules and rewritten the book about going to space. Nobody in the world is coming up with this kind of engineering expertise. Uh, they are, this is only their seventh. This is only, I was just going to say, let the sound run, guys, because I think I want to hear what they're saying. Catch by the launch tower. This is the same tower, the launch pad, where that booster took off from just seven and a half minutes ago. Yeah. Um, listen, this is only their seventh test flight. Talk about perfecting the engineering uh, involved in this. They want to run 25 of these flights this year in 2025. 25 of them. By the way, that is not entirely popular in that neighborhood in Texas because of the environmental damage. Well, look at that and the crowds that come through. Yes, but they've, they've done environmental damage. They're affecting the, uh, the wildlife there. They've had, they just two nights ago, they had a big public gathering with people. Uh, complaining to the FAA about all of this. That said, uh, wow. under the Trump administration, highly unlikely that the FAA or NASA will curtail them. And honestly, now the question I will tell you is whether uh, NASA is essentially just going to completely give all control, all control, over going to the moon over to SpaceX. Uh, it, they, are, they are so advanced at this point, and all of their technology is what NASA is depending on. Leroy Chow, you know, SpaceX just made it look easy there. It is not. It is far from it. Absolutely. This is incredible. Now they've done it two out of three times. The only reason they didn't do it last time is because they had a problem on the ground. It wasn't a problem mm -hmm. with the booster. What they have done is they have proved that they can soft return this booster and they know how to refurbish them because they do the Falcon 9s on a, on a routine basis. That means they can reuse this booster and that's going to dramatically bring down the cost of launch. Starship is also reusable, fully reusable. Mm. It hasn't landed intact yet, but it's demonstrated that it can. It's hovered over the Indian Ocean more than once. It's going to do it again today, hopefully, and it'll do it in daylight this time so we can get more telemetry and more data. <laughs> but this is an exciting, exciting program. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.